All right, we're moving ahead into module eight. And so I'd asked you to take a look at the preview stuff for this particular module. And so let me kind of get this going. This is on like pages 224, 225. So look at this page first, and depending on which version of the textbook you have, this could be either 224, or 225. And make sure you read the directions. It says use the checked words to complete this graphic organizer. There are only four checked words, although you're responsible for knowing each of these, all right? And so please go ahead and put these in the proper spots in here. Uh, and then these two questions, it says, complete these two sentences using the preview words. And actually they're more like preview phrases there. All right, so that's that particular page. And then when you look at the, are you ready for going on into module eight? These first four are some review with simplifying. So your job is to look at these expressions and combine any like terms you see. We'll be doing that a lot in this one. And then down below <clears throat> is remembering how do you graph? There's a little pointer here. Um, that says you can always make a table, all right? But if you see that you have the equation given to you in slope-intercept form, well, hot diggity, why wouldn't you do that? Okay, for example, in number five, it says y equals four x minus one. When I look at it compared to the slope-intercept format, the number or the coefficient in front of x is your slope. In this case, it's four, steep. And then minus one means that's your y-intercept is at zero, negative one. So you're going to put that point there and then start building your graph with a slope of positive four. All right. So on your market set, go. Go ahead and make sure those are done. We'll be checking those shortly. But then what I want you to do is in your book also, then flip on over to the beginning of module eight and I want to walk through some of this with you and then turn you loose on just a few problems on the assignment okay our goal now is going to be how are we going to solve systems of equations and today the method that we're going to use is graphing all right so they say let's take a look at this particular um, system Okay, we've been doing basically one linear equation at a time. Remember what slope-intercept format looks like. And it's asking you, all right, let's, let's graph these two lines on here. So I'm going to make this first one purple because I have the beauty of different colors here. 3x minus 2. 3 is my slope. Negative 2 is your y-intercept. Start there and build your line. A slope of three means up three over one, up three to the right one. In other words, my vertical change, the numerator, the change in y is positive three, and the horizontal change is positive one, three over one, three over one. Or we could build this way and go down three to the left one, down three to the left one. All right, you get an idea. A slope of positive three, yes, should be going up and it should look kind of steep. Okay, good. So this is the y equals three x minus two. All right, the second line that we're going to plot on here is y equals negative two x plus three. My slope this time is negative two. The y intercept is positive three. So I'm gonna start here. A negative slope means my line is slanting downward. So this one should have a slant that looks like this. A slope of negative two means that rise is negative two and the run is one, or it could be, you could have it as a positive two over a negative one, either way. Down two to the right one, down two to the right one, down two to the right one. I like this one because it gives me a lot of points. I'm gonna keep building this way as well, up two, but to the left one. I like to get as many coordinates as I can. It helps me draw a straighter line. All right, now let's stop for one second. Every single point on this line, whether it's hitting at a nice integer set of ordered pairs 
or whether it's in between them somehow, every single ordered pair point on this line is a solution to that line, okay? Every single one I pick. What it's asking me in B, it says, explain how to tell whether two negative one is a solution without using the graph. Now they just told us to graph it. And then they're saying, hey, don't use the graph. <sighs> All right, well, they're saying algebraically, how would you do this? Well, first what you would do is you would substitute two for x and negative one for y. Then evaluate and see if it's true. Well, here's what's gonna happen. When I plug a two in for x, I'm gonna take three times two and then minus two, and then I'm gonna say that equals the y value over here was negative one. Well, here's what happens. I get negative one, as I simplify, negative one equals six minus two, which is four. Negative one equals four, no. Okay, not true. Which means that that is not a solution. 2, negative 1 is not a solution. That was this, this line. And if you look at it, at 2, negative 1, there's that point right there, but it's not on the purple line. Mm -mm. So it's not a solution. How do you tell whether it works in this one? We're going to do the same thing. And the other equation, substitute 2 for x and negative 1 for y and then evaluate and see what happens. Well, when I do it this time using this equation, y equals negative two x plus three, I'm saying negative one equals negative two times two plus three. Okay, now let's evaluate. On the left-hand side, I still have negative one. Negative two times two is negative four plus three. Is negative one equal to negative four plus three? Yes, you get negative one. Negative one equals negative one. True, it's a solution. Yes, a solution. So what we're doing this time is we're saying, how do you use the graph to tell whether this is a solution? I can tell right here, here's two negative one. It's on my graph. The point is on the line. There we go. Okay, that's how you can tell when you're looking at the graph to see if it's true or not. Okay, all right, let's keep going. And notice, by the way, what we're going to be focusing on now is you had two lines. Where did they meet up? Here it looks like I crossed or I intersected or I shared a point at this ordered pair, one, one. If I plug these in, x is one and y is one, I should get a true statement for both of these equations. So here, one comma one, that point of intersection, it looks like it on the graph, prove it algebraically. So take three times one, that's supposed to equal one. Three times one is three, three minus two is one. It worked for that equation. Plug a one in for x and a one in for y. Negative two times one is negative two. And then add three more and I get one. Ha ha. It is the solution of both of these equations. Okay, that's what you're after today. Go ahead and turn to, uh, let's see, this is a, uh, an example that's worked out for you. You can use that as a reference. Right now I want you to turn to page 229 and let's work through three and four together. Alrighty. Solve each system by graphing and check it by substituting the values that you get algebraically. So on this first one, this means y equals negative one for a slope plus two as a y-intercept. Here we go. A slope of negative one means go down one and up to the right one, down and to the right. I love slopes of negative one because it goes boom, boom, boom. 
since my graph is all going by intervals of one, I could find a ton of nice points that are on there. So that's this line, okay, the blue one. Y equals negative one X plus two. All right, the other line is Y equals negative four X minus one. Holy cow, my Y intercept is negative one and the slope is negative four. Yowza, that's really steep. One, two, three, four over one. One, two, ugh. I'm estimating. Up, two, three, four to the left one. Up, two, three, four to the left one. Here is this line. Notice both of these are slanted downward because they both had negative slopes. Y equals negative four X minus one. This appears to be my solution. Make sure you put parentheses around it because it is an ordered pair. Negative one, three. All right, so now what we want you to do is prove it. Prove that that actually works. So let's check it in that first equation. Okay. Y is three. It's negative one times X, which is also negative one. And you're supposed to see, is this true? Well, that gives me a positive one, and one plus two is three. Hey, it worked. Ch -ch -ch. Okay, now go ahead and check it in the other equation. Make sure it works. This says y, that's three, equals negative four times x minus one. So I plugged in negative one and three for your x and your y, and you're saying, does this work out? Well, let's see, this is positive four and I get three, ha, hey, 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 checks out. So that's your solution. Try one more, y equals negative two x plus five. Start at five, slope is negative two, down two over one, down two over one, down two over one, down two over one. Ta-da, up to the left one, here we go. Ah. Not so good at drawing. All right, this is y equals negative 2x plus 5. All right, let's get the other one on there. This one says y equals 3x. Hey, there's nothing written there for a y-intercept. That means it goes through the origin. Whoop. Hey, that means this also happens to be a proportional relationship. All right, here we go. Slope of 3, up 3 over 1. Boom, there it is. Get some more points on here. Down three to the left one, down three to the left. Just to help you draw it, connect to get your graph. This is y equals three x. Looks to me like my point of intersection is at one, three. One, three, one, three. X is one, y is three. Check it. So my first equation said the y value has to equal negative two times the x value plus five. Let's see. That's negative two plus five, that gives me three. Ha ha. Weird that both of these ended up having y values of three. That's just one of those weird old math coincidences. All right, on this one, y equals three x. So three is the y value. Three times x, x is one. Well, duh. That's three. Works. Shazam. There we go. That's as far as I want to take you with today. We're just going to do a couple of these problems and then venture into some of this more complicated stuff. Okay. So here's what I want you to do. I think this is like page 232 in your textbook. Do number one. Uh, you should be able to answer question four and do number five. And then number six is a multi-step thing. Work through that one. It's all I need you to do for tomorrow, and we'll pick it up where we left off. Good luck, and may the force be with you.